It's not easy to be a, a cult. And there is a famous saying that the cults have no friends but the mountains. <laughs> when I was in school, well, it was a chaotic period. There was the war between Iran and Iraq. And Two jets swooped low to bomb a Kurdish town recently taken by Iran. And the economic situation was pretty bad. My parents are farmers, so I, I spent a huge amount of time actually doing farms. In many ways, it was not the ideal place for a kid to get interested in something like mathematics. My brother started to teach me more advanced mathematics, integration, derivation, which is not part of middle school education. He is probably the person who has had the most influence on my education, on my career. But despite all the wars and difficulties, actually, I was quite happy. And I, for that, I, of course, I thank my parents who kept me happy, and I also thank the culture, which helped us to survive. I'm a professor of mathematics at the University of Cambridge at the Department of Pure Mathematics. And I have been here for the last 12 years. After uh, doing undergraduate, I came to the UK in, in 2000, and after one year, I, I got a refugee status. That means that I could stay in this country. Birational geometry is about classifying algebraic varieties up to birational isomorphism. That means allowing some flexibility of working with algebraic varieties. And the main problem in the field is to show that every variety is birationally transformed into another variety which is constructed using three type of building blocks. Uh, we have three very distinct kind of geometry, geometry that already I have listed them here. So a lot of my work has to do with this statement. And technically this boils down to proving the minimal model conjecture and the so-called abundance conjecture. To me, mathematics has two stages. The first one is to learn what other people have done. It means reading books, reading articles. Reading mathematics, beautiful mathematics, is like going to a touristic, historical, beautiful town. Somewhere like maybe Cambridge. And when you walk around, you see monuments, you see beautiful architecture, and that's like the first stage, where you just see what other people have created. So the second stage is like if I suddenly have wings and I fly over a city and I can see a lot more than before. For example, I can see more monuments, I can see connections between these monuments, the kind of thing that I could just not see on the ground. In, in many ways, solving a, a problem somehow quite often has to do with understanding connections between two concepts, two notions. Whose chest is the best chest in the whole wide world? Uh, Dad. Who? Daddy. So I have my son now, who is around four years and a half. He's very curious, and uh, one thing I really like about him is that he is also very creative. For example, he, he prefers to build his own toys rather than just get a toy from the shop and play with that. To solve a, a difficult problem or to create a new theory, you just have to be original, you have to be creative. I mean, that, that's part of the criterion of evaluating whether a, a piece of mathematics is good or not. I want to continue as much as I can, solve problems and help other people, the younger people who solve problems to do mathematics. I really want to help people in less privileged locations, countries. People who don't have the same kind of opportunities as many others who go to top schools, top universities. Especially in the case of Kurdis. And I'm hoping that this news would just put maybe a little smile on the lips of these 40 million people. <laughs>